Thank you very much for those beautiful words, Radek. Um, actually, my family and I, uh, my brothers are here tonight, felt a, a deep personal loss with Poland's recent tragedy. And I assure you that tonight we're all Poles and we grieve together with your people. It's now my honor to uh, turn the podium to Fred Kemp, a close friend of Poland who covered the rise of solidarity as a young journalist. Many of you already knew him from his long successful years at the Wall Street Journal, where he was the author of three books. He's a prize winning correspondent, columnist, and editor and associate publisher of the Wall Street Journal Europe. In the past three years, uh, as president and CEO of the Atlantic Council, he's presided over a period of enormous growth and accomplishment. And we know that there are many exciting years ahead for Fred and the Atlantic Council. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to a friend of Morning Joe, actually, Fred Kemp. A graceful entrance. Please give your applause to Fred Kemp. That was I practiced that with Steve Martin. Um, uh, thank, thank you, Mika and Joe. Uh, I just want to say something very briefly to Foreign Minister Radek Sikorski, an old friend and a great leader. Um, Poland changed my life as a young journalist because I saw what courageous people could do in adverse conditions to not only change their own fate, but change the fate of their country, of Europe, and of the world. Thank you to all Poles anywhere in this audience, especially in Foreign Minister Sikorski. Thank you. It, it has been a remarkable year, and for that I want to thank our talented and committed directors, members, and staff who are sitting among you. They're motivated by a mission, and that mission is renewing the Atlantic community to address global challenges and then working with our global partners to get the job done in the most difficult issues. As you can see by the caliber of the attendance of the awardees tonight, this mission is as relevant today as it has ever been given the daunting challenges we face. From global financial reform, you'll hear from Deutsche Bank Chief Executive Joe Ackerman, stabilizing Afghanistan, from climate-related issues to preventing Iran from acquiring nuclear weapons. We're working those issues and many more. The Euro-Atlantic community makes up the largest economic space on Earth, the largest area of cross-foreign direct investment, and the largest community of common values, market-based economies, individual rights, and rule of law. So, now, I'm o I'm, uh, the, uh, you, we know the US and Europe can't solve the world's problems, but it's our conviction that the solution to almost all of them has U.S.-European agreement as their precondition. I'm not going to talk about our work. You can read about that in the program. But what is traditional at this awards program, and I hope you will pay attention to this part, is that we thank those individuals responsible for the most ambitious of our new initiatives. I, I ask you to hold your applause until I have had a chance to thank them all for their service. First. We officially launched the Michael S. Ansari Africa Center this month with an inaugural speech by the acting president of Nigeria, Goodluck Jonathan, on anti-corruption and good governance. This would not be possible were it not for Atlantic Council Board Director Michael Ansari, founder, chairman, and CEO of MIC Industries. He's an extraordinary human being who is the founder of this important initiative. We also expanded the work of our new Eurasia Energy Center and renamed it the Dinu Patriciu Eurasia Center. Its focus is the crucial stability and prosperity of the Caspian, Black Sea, and Central Asian region. Our second annual Black Sea Energy and Economic Forum will be this fall in Istanbul. This initiative is only possible because of the creative and entrepreneurial Atlantic Council International Advisory Board member Dinu Patricio of DP Holdings. Uh, and I'm also proud to announce tonight a new initiative, and this has to do with Poland. 
a new initiative of the Atlantic Council, the Wroclaw Global Forum. Each year we will bring together uh, in the breathtakingly beautiful city of Wroclaw, a place where my grandfather was born when it was known as Breslau, the leading political and business players from Central and Eastern Europe, from their West and West European neighbors from North America as well, to take on the crucial issues of that region. It is my great pleasure tonight to thank the visionary mayor of Wroclaw, Rafal Dutkiewicz, and our equally visionary board member, Maciej Wojtutski, the CEO of Polish Telecom, for being champions of this idea. <laughs> so before I go on to the last two, please thank Michael Ansari, Dinu Patricio, Maciej Wojtutski, and Rafał Dutkiewicz. Thank you for these important initiatives, gentlemen. I want to thank Pricewaterhouse Coopers, a PwC, and the Atlantic Council have formed a strategic partnership with our global business and economic program through which we're going to do exciting new projects pertaining to the global economy. I want to thank our new international advisory member, Bob Moritz, the chairman and the senior partner of PwC LLP. Thank you very much, Bob. And then and finally, and finally, great thanks goes to the chair of our International Advisory Board, General Brent Scowcroft, and a member of that board and the Strategic Advisors Group co-chair, Tom Anders of Airbus. Through the leadership of Brent Scowcroft and Tom Anders and the co-chairmanship as well of Senator Hagel, we have been able to expand and strengthen our work on NATO, which is where it all started at the Atlantic Council, and international security so that we're doing cutting edge work at an inflection point that will decide the future of the great alliance for which we all stand. So I ask you now to provide a rousing round of applause to these individuals and so many more of you in the audience who help our important work. <laughs> With that, it is an honor for me to welcome to the stage General Brent Scowcroft, one of the most gifted yet most modest strategic thinkers on the planet. We won't do long introductions tonight for this purpose, but his service has been an inspiration personally to me and to many others in the audience. If I were to list all his accomplishments, we, should, we would soon be eating dessert, so I will stop here and ask General Brent Scowcroft to take it from here. <laughs> 